Assalamualaikum. Um, welcome to the Dublin City Council Candidate Forum. My name is Samina Usman. I'm the Government Relations Coordinator for the Council on American Islamic Relations, San Francisco Bay Area Office. Um, we put on these events so that we can inform the public about who these candidates are and who will be serving you um, as your next Dublin City Council member. Um, and so if you can put on the slide, Soha. Thank you so much. So again, um, if you want to see our, so every every other year we put together a voter guide of both um, for the state issues and also for the local measures as well. And so you can find that at bit.ly forward slash care CA vote. Again, we'll be showing you what the, how your elected officials, your congressional members and state representatives have voted on issues that are important to the Muslim community um, and important to civil rights as a whole. And likewise, we also, we give uh, recommendations for statewide propositions and uh, local measures as well. So please uh, definitely take a, a look at that. Um, if you, you know, to also check to see if you are registered to vote, um, we have the link uh, for you to, to go ahead and check that. Um, and also we have videos of all of the candidate forms that we've held thus far. I believe we've held about four. Um, and also please make sure to, you know, sign the Get Out the Muslim Vote. Um, we have a, a pledge form and um, make sure to also register to vote. Again, we have it on October 19th. So make sure to see if you are registered. Oftentimes people don't realize that if you change your address or whatnot, then you have to re-register. So make sure to go ahead and do that. So we have a lot of other informative webinars um, such as on Prop 15, Prop 16, Prop 17, um, and a lot of other uh, voter engagement um, videos for you to check out. So please, please let, take a look at that, um, that link. Um, and without further ado, we'll go ahead and start the candidate forum. I have uh, reminded all of the candidates that they have one minute to answer the questions. Um, I've sent them the questions in advance uh, so that they can, they can take a look at it. Um, one thing I want to also mention is that I'd like to recognize um, the organizations and mosques that have co-sponsored this event. So along with Karis FBA, we have MCC East Bay, the San Ramon Valley Islamic Center, the Northern California Islamic um, Center, and uh, Council, excuse me, and uh, the Muslim American Society as well. So all of these organizations have co-sponsored this event um, that we have tonight. Um, so again, if you have any questions, please uh, fill, please uh, enter them into the Q and A tab, like by, by pressing the Q and A tab. Um, also, the candidates will be including their um, their information, their websites, or contact information, also in the chat. Um, so if you can uh, go ahead and do that, uh, so then you can follow up with them. Um, and without further ado, let's go ahead and have the the first question. So the first question for tonight. Um, will be please introduce yourself, uh, please include your involvement in the city and what are your top three priorities if elected? And we're gonna go alphabetically. So let's start with um, Mr. Kadri. Excellent. Uh, well, good evening uh, or afternoon, Salaam Alaikum. Uh, I'd like to thank the organizers CARE and the other organizing committees uh, for putting this uh, forum together. Uh, by way of formal introduction, my name is Kashif Kadri and I'm running for Dublin City Council. Uh, over the past 15 years, I've been serving the community in three main ways. Uh, one is serving underserved communities through healthcare, uh, providing health fairs and, and clinics. The second is STEM tutoring, mentoring, coaching, specifically geared towards youth. And the third area is community leadership, uh, specifically HOAs, PFCs, and advisory committees. Uh, on a professional level, I've held a, a number of uh, leadership roles, including business development, commercial operations, strategic planning, and product development. I think it's this unique combination of uh, community service and professional experience in managing complex budgets, PL, partnerships with uh, other companies, and coming up with new innovative technologies to uh, help address the challenges of Dublin. Uh, my key priorities are safety and traffic, resilience and preparedness, and economic and environmental sustainability. Uh, I invite all of you to visit my website. Thank you. 
also, let's also remind everybody to stick to time. I know you stick, you, you were pretty close to it, but also <laughs> just letting you know if we go over uh, five seconds, uh, apologies, but we will mute you. <laughs> Thank you very much. And also um, some people seem to sometimes have a little bit of a hard time seeing the timer. Uh, so you may want to, instead of going to speaker view, go to um, gallery view as well. So. Thank you so much. And so now we'll have uh, Mr. McCorston. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Good evening. My name is Mike McCorston. Uh, my wife and Sylvia and I have, have lived in Dublin for 26 years and we have two daughters who've gone through the Dublin school systems. Um, my professional background includes a 35 year career in corporate treasury and corporate banking. I do serve on as a volunteer or a commission member on affordable housing and human services commissions within the Tri-Valley. As far as my campaign initiatives are, are concerned, there are three elements. Smart development, we need to critically think about our future development efforts and, and create solutions uh, for the needs of our residents and at the same time uh, consider our remaining open space and conserve our natural resources. Another element is our affordable housing. Uh, Dublin has become unaffordable for most, and I'm going to look for uh, creative solutions uh, so people can live here, including our teachers, essential workers, uh, and our seniors. The third element is uh, fiscal sustainability. And my priorities are going to be to solve, obviously, financial imbalances as we go into COVID-19 without cutting desperately needed services. Sorry, Ms. McCorson, we, we have to uh, continue with the, the next person. Uh, so, um, Mr. Qureshi, if you can speak. Hey, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you, Kier, for hosting this event. Um, my name is Samir Qureshi, and I've been a uh, resident of Dublin for nine years. I've been involved in many organizations uh, since early on in my life. I've actually been on a Dublin Planning Commission. In addition to that, I've actually served in Environmental Commission, School Board, Human Services, and Zoning Board in other states. Um, I have, my wife and I have raised four children here, and now for me, it's more about giving back to the community. I also would like to encourage younger youth to be involved in the political process, and that's why I'm running. Uh, my campaign is focused around trust transformed together. What that means is really trust is about working with the community to make sure that I'm able to, public safety is top of my mind. Transform is about smart growth, economic development, and traffic and climate issues. And together is more about how do we work together with the community, with the school, and as a group, diverse, diverse community that we have in Dublin, how do we work together and live together? So to me, um, ultimately, it's more about passion, giving back to the community, and that's why I'm running. Excuse me. Um, Mr. Costello? Hello, and thank you for letting me come. And hello, gentlemen and ladies. Thank you for being here. Uh, I am running because uh, this is my my 16th election. This is my 32nd year on the ballot. I am trying to show that to everybody that everybody can run for office, whether it be a disability, non-disability, whatever their disability, they can still do the job as well as anybody else. That's my first and foremost thing that I'm working on. The other thing is that I want to slow down our growth because we're growing so fast. And we're growing with with the, the all of the stuff that is growing. It is for high-priced people to move in and, and, and not enough for the low income. Now I'm working on, on the low income angle. I also want to uh, help everybody Right. Thank, um, you. Thank you, Mr. Casella. Um, if we can have uh, Ms. Hugh. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. So my name is Sherry Hu, and my family and I have lived in Dublin for over a decade. Both my kids went to uh, public schools here. And uh, I'm running for the Dublin City Council because I want to give back to the community. I, I'm an immigrant. Came into um, came to this country about twenty years ago to to pursue my PhD in architectural engineering, and uh, my specialty is in 
green building technologies and the environmental sustainability. So you heard a lot of people talk about uh, their concerns about the overdevelopment. This is my specialty. I want to bring my um, expertise and experience to help the city out. So my priority including, you know, help the smart and sustainable growth of the city and provide public safety and security and help local businesses and high paying jobs. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Muppidi. And am I pronouncing that correctly? Forgive me. Yeah, Shri Muppidi. Uh, but thank you so much. Um, I'm a big fan of Kara's work. I actually spoke to Zara Baloo for a podcast a few years ago. Um, so really glad to be here. Um, my name is Shri Muppidi and I'm running for Dublin City Council to serve the community that I grew up in. My family and I moved to the Tri-Valley in 2004. And I remember being one of the only few brown kids in my entire community. And I'm just so happy to see Dublin has become more diverse over the last two decades. But because of this wave of change, I think we need diverse and new ideas in city council, especially this year when our country is facing so many challenges. Our city needs someone who's thinking long-term for a future. And if we don't take steps right now to make changes in our infrastructure, our economy, around climate change, around public safety, then we do not have a Dublin that we're proud of for the next generation. And that includes me. And I think that uh, I, I'm qualified to hold this position because I have hold prior experience working in government, having worked in policy at the State Department and the Federal Reserve. My priorities for Dublin are in, around local economy, recovery and growth diversity and equity, and building affordable housing. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Um, so the next question I'm gonna put in the chat and it'll go to uh, Mr. McCorston. Um, as of October 5th, there has been a total of 291 COVID cases um, in the city of Dublin. This pandemic has shaken our communities through sickness and loss of life, along with negatively impacting the economy. So how should the city of Dublin be involved in the recovery as we deal with the COVID-19 crisis? Well, health and safety come first. We're now experiencing a second wave of infections that are, you know, we need to look at things in a cautious manner and reopen local businesses and health with safety in mind. But immediate sustainability measures, we need to continue to, to offer these microloans, rent deferment programs. We continue to uh, need to work with state and local governments for further funding and grants. Uh, longer term strategy, we can continue to uh, work with small businesses uh, uh, to induce them with, with small, you know, sales tax reimbursements, programs, grants, tax rebates, impact deferral fees uh, for further development uh, to enhance uh, or to develop uh, affordable housing and senior housing. So there's a lot of things that we can do and continue to do. Uh, so Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Mr. Qureshi? Great. Um, you know, similar to what Mike said, I think the city has, personally, in my opinion, has done a good job on overall helping the businesses. We've done microloans. So I want to make sure that actually continues to find more dollars available uh, through different, different programs. So, so I know the city is actually looking at uh, some packages that they're going to receive through CARES Pack to receive, give back to our community. Um, other things that would be looking at how we can help during these times, like improve some of the things for these businesses. So wherever they need help, whether it be an improvement to the facade or so, those would be another important things. I think ultimately, you know, we got to drive more businesses. So there are so many residents in this town and with so much business, uh, business owners here, let's make sure that they buy within Dublin, things that are actually, whether it be restaurants or things that are being sold. So those are important things to me that we support the business, we encourage them, we actually put a, a, maybe a group of them together to see what's working for them and how can the city continue to help. So ultimately we gotta, this is a small community, we gotta make sure that businesses survive through these times. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Costello? Yes, uh, what I was saying is that uh, we we all have to stick together. Uh, 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 not, not only the businesses, and the uh, people that, that live here, uh, we all we all share the, the same property lines. We all share the responsibility of taking care of each other's. In this in this pandemic, we have to make sure that we're still getting all of our uh, masks on, 
making sure that we're six feet apart at work. But the thing is, is that we got to go back to work. We have to make sure that we are still willing to help our neighbors. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Hu? Um, so our school has done excellent job in COVID-19 and uh, we are doing better than our surrounding cities. And we will continue work with the uh, Alameda County Public Health Department and uh, we will continue to uh, adapt um, the new reg regulations about the safety and uh, also, our city is doing better. So for our opening schedules, we might um, take some uh, unique approaches, but we need to overall work with other um, organizations with the state, with Alameda County to make sure it's safe. And especially for the school opening, for the business openings, we want to be cautious, but we also want to say um, how this can help with the business, keep that in mind as well. Um, COVID-19 might be going for months, even years. Uh, so we want to make sure our community will stay together and will fight together. Thank you. Um, Ms. Mapini? I think that um, safety is of utmost um, importance, especially as we're considering reopening COVID. Uh, as a result of COVID-19, but I think that there's a lot we can do to support local businesses adjust to and recover from COVID. Some ideas are around continuing microloan programs, providing workshops around important topics, for example, digital marketing strategies and exploring commercial rent caps. I also plan to ease the process of doing business in Dublin by implementing more user-friendly design to streamline permitting and licensing procedures, for example, for those who want to do outdoor operations. And then I think that we can also drive local employment through workforce development programs and entrepreneurship boot camps. And I hold this experience in having worked in economic development. I studied economics at Stanford, worked in economic development at the US Federal Reserve, as well as the World Bank, and now work in venture capital. So I think these experiences will help me uh, and the rest of the city to do a fantastic job in terms of supporting our local business community, as well as ensuring that uh, people are not losing their jobs and facing economic hardship. Thank you. Mr. Kadri? Yeah, so through my work experience, along with my educational background in both science and healthcare, um, I will definitely lead the community using a scientific evidence-based based approach to reopening the city. Uh, so after the 2008 downturn, I was able to help businesses rebuild and thrive by diversifying uh, product portfolios and roadmap. And I think we need to employ the same type of strategies and fiscal responsibility as a city uh, as we begin to, to reopen. Uh, the city needs to provide the right type and amount of incentives to ensure businesses, particularly small businesses, can successfully reopen in a safe manner. Uh, the second point that I wanted to mention is, uh, you know, particularly in light of COVID-19 and then also the fires, you know, we need to plan, resource, and adapt to disasters and implement a holistic management system uh, at, at all levels, right? And, and I think this specifically, you know, related to COVID, we need to have better communication, real-time communication and science uh, in promoting and protecting everyone's uh, health and, and the, uh, the well-being of the citizens of, of, uh, of Dublin. Thank you. Uh, so the next question is going to go to uh, Mr. Qureshi. Um, he's going to be answering that first. Uh, so the current unemployment rate in Dublin is 10.9% and has increased by 8.3% over the past year. How would Dublin address the issue of people facing potential homelessness once the eviction moratorium ends? And how do we provide assistance to those who are unhoused or in need? Yeah, I, you know, first, uh, you know, do, does Dublin have a big homeless problem? Well, you know, not as much as you would see in other cities. I think what we have to do, we are such a small community, we have to take care of people, right? Some of the things we talked about, you just heard about businesses. So let's look at programs that have worked in other cities. Let's look at what funding do we have available that we could actually help some of these families in need. And let's look at some organizations that actually can help these folks too. So I think ultimately it needs to evolve around money that's available, money that can be brought in, and how do we help these families survive through these situations, right? Like we're not gonna take care of them forever, but we gotta take care of them now when we, they need some help. So to me, I think ultimately it goes back to is, let's look at where the issues are, let's evaluate, 
how do we help them? Let's find resources. Let's find organizations that can actually help these families. So ultimately, that's how we're going to have to keep our families together in Dublin and not have to lose them out of Dublin. Thank you. Um, Mr. Costello? Yes. Um, yes. The, 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 the homeless is very, very important. Uh, uh, even the housing is important. And it is very, very sad when, when, when people lose their, their, their places because they cannot pay and uh, landlords are not going to go the extra mile. It is very, very sad when, when things happen. And, and I want to help people. I want to make sure that, that when I'm elected, that, that the people of, of, of all, all races, all colors, are, are all taken care of. And the homelessness does not matter what, what color that you are. It can happen to anybody. It could happen to me. It could happen to you. You don't know. We all are here together and we all to help each other. Thank you. Um, Ms. Hu? So our city has a higher unemployment rate. And uh, this is a similar situation that has happened to anywhere else in the country. So on one side, um, the city trying to help with the situation. And on the other side, we want to help with the uh, job opportunities. There's a certain ways we can help out. For people who lost the jobs, um, maybe there's ways to help them to get back to the work workforce. And the city can help them to fund the um, skills or train them on um, different things for the employment opportunities. And for the housing um, situations, we will try to help out, we will provide loans and the financial assistance to help everybody to, um, to go over this hard time. So overall, we are neighbors, we are all same community. So we'll do what we can do to um, help, help everybody to survive. Thank you, um, Ms. Muffity. I think Dublin, like the rest of the Bay Area, is facing a dire housing crisis. And as a result, homelessness has peaked, especially during COVID-19. Uh, there is homelessness in Dublin. And I think that we need to do better in terms of providing services to help these folks. Uh, the ways that we can actually implement some changes is to take advantage of grant money provided by both the county, state, and federal government to provide services to the homeless population, for example, around health care, mental health, drug addiction counseling and job training. Uh, for example, looking at Fremont, Fremont built a homeless navigation center uh, that assists uh, homeless folks to actually be able to take advantage of these services to get back into housing. And I think that Dublin has a really great opportunity to make a difference around this because, because of the, the, the number of people that might be uh, facing eviction as a result of high rents uh, and not being able to pay off uh, due to like being unemployed. So I think that Dublin has an opportunity to make some change. And I think that we as city council members can do better to serve this community. Mr. Cadre? Yeah, so I think fundamentally, you know, Dublin is not immune to homelessness. Uh, and and as the, the, as the economic downturn continues, right? As people continue to lose their jobs, um, they're going to fall short on rent, and the city needs to provide uh, programs to to both the renters as well as the as um, as well as the, the the homeowners, right? So so both the tenants and the people that are uh, that that are the homeowners. Uh, I think fundamentally, you know, Dublin needs to be more inclusive uh, in and in increase the uh, affordable housing footprint. Uh, providing houses and, and appropriate housing across all economic uh, and income categories, right? And I think what we need to do is partner with housing advocates and experts. Um, you know, the city needs to do this to explore concrete action steps uh, that city council and the city of Dublin can take to ensure that we, you know, prevent uh, a, whole, a homelessness crisis uh, and, and uh, address this gap. Thank you, Mr. McCorston. 
Yeah, your statistics are actually understating the true unemployment rate, which is somewhere between 15 and 18 percent if you were to con uh, consider uh, discouraged workers and people taking temporary jobs to cover essentials. You know, we need to stretch the bridge to recovery. And one other candidate said, we don't know how long this is going to be. So we need to continue with the rent deferral programs and other public assistance. This is a little easier for me because I'm involved in anti-poverty uh, commissions. As far as helping the, uh, the unsheltered, we need, you know, we can identify existing underutilized structures in Dublin that can be repurposed for temporary or transitional housing. Uh, we might even consider identifying or building a center that provides, you know, hot meals and showers and bathrooms and just a place to go. Um, you know, we could ask, uh, work for, with the city to set aside land. Uh, so uh, you can have a site that's, that's highly regulated. Uh, one of the things that Livermore put together is something called a, an, a, a safe parking program where people who are living out of their cars um, have a place to be. Um, I would, Thank one of the things that's really Thank important. Thank you so much. I'm sorry, we have to move on to the next question. Um, so I'll go ahead and put that in the chat. Uh, so yeah, this that. question would go to um, Mr. Costello first. And so there are demands for more commercial properties, more residential properties, and high density housing for low income families. At the same time, there are people who are opposed to overbuilding the land. Where, would, where do you stand um, with regard to future growth of Dublin? Um, would you support increased commercial growth, increased residential growth, um, or downtown revitalization, or maintaining the status quo? Well, um... I am a big, big person for uh, do not overgrow us, that's for sure. Um, uh, we need to, to reuse, utilize the uh, properties that are vacant right now. We need to use those for the businesses that are, that are gone, like uh, Coco's, like Toys R Us, use those for for other businesses and have them come in. I would love to, to see a, uh, uh, you know, other, other restaurants come in and, and thrive and not, and not have the, the same uh, restaurants over and over and over and over. Like, like we have uh, 10 uh, uh, coffee houses, all the same name. You, 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 we got to have all kinds of, things in here, not not just, just the same things. And we also have to, I'm oh, sorry. Thank you. Um, Ms. Hu? Um, so I have lived in Dublin for over 10 years and I have experienced a tremendous growth. Uh, well, I already, we already heard about a lot of concerns from the residents about overdevelopment. So first, uh, we want to start with what's the vision for our city. And uh, we want to have a community involvement. So we want to discuss about it. Uh, we want to still have a suburban life, but uh, close to the city. And that's why we call our Dublin the new American backyard. We never think we want to be San Jose or San Francisco, these uh, uh, large cities. And this is a question we need to um, have a, um, everybody sit down to think about what we need. And we also need to consider our regulation uh, requirement from the state. And uh, there's a balance um, between it. As an architectural engineering and an environmentalist, uh, and I also want our city to have a sustainable development. Thank you. Um, Ms. Muppety? So to set some context around Dublin, um, Dublin was the first fastest growing city in all of California in 2018 and the 11th fastest in the entire nation uh, in 2018 as well. And so as a result, uh, the rate of housing will just naturally slow because we cannot be the fastest growing every year. Uh, and simply there's just not enough land. But to counter that, it is still very expensive to live in Dublin. The current median home is nearly $1 million and rent is between $2,600 to $3,000. And as someone who's grown up here in Dublin and in the Tri-Valley, I can barely afford to live in my own community. And I fear that it's only going to get worse. And so I think our city needs to do a better job of building more affordable housing. Um, in the past decade, we've 
focused primarily on market rate housing, spending over 500% over our targeted arena allotment towards above market rate. Uh, and so I think that we need to do a better job of building affordable housing across all, all across all income levels to ensure that people like me, young folks, teachers, the seniors uh, can actually afford to live in Dublin and be a part of this community. Thank you, Mr. Kadri. Yes, so I, I think as, uh, as mentioned previously, right, we've been quick to add housing uh, and commercial development has been slow to catch up. Uh, to build a vibrant, environmentally and economically sustainable city, uh, we need to have that balance of both homes and businesses uh, to promote a healthy and uh, sustainable, walkable, bikeable uh, city, right? And, and that has environmental implications as well, right? We can reduce the miles traveled um, and, and carbon emissions. Right? And, and mo most importantly, we can keep tax dollars within Dublin to support the needs of the city uh, in terms of infrastructure and, and the like. Uh, you know, in order to in ensure that Dublin can grow into this vibrant, economically sustainable city, um, we need to set the tone for future developments. Uh, we need to be thoughtful about land use and planning and zoning and make sure that it is in fact inclusive uh, to everyone. Uh, and, and along this line, you know, the, the idea of a downtown Dublin is really appealing to me, right? This, this makes it more viable and thriving as a city. Thank you, Mr. McCorston. Okay, so, you know, as far as residential development's concerned, uh, we need to focus and build around transit oriented zones. The strategy is gonna help address the arena deficiencies and mitigate pollution by reducing traffic flows around the city. Um, it, also an in integral part about the strategy should be the, the, the focus on development of affordable housing, independent and assisted living facilities for our seniors or folks with disabilities. As far as commercial development's concerned, commercial development should be evaluated based on sustainability uh, and its positive impact on the community. And it should be integrated with mixed use developments, again, within transit oriented zones. Uh, it should be looking strongly at redevelopment efforts. And that would include a lot of the existing and older buildings that could ultimately be used for uh, commercial and residential needs. Thank you, um, Mr. Qureshi. Yeah, no, um, a lot of stuff has already been said. My view is um, economic development is definitely something I think we need. Our revenues will come down over the next few years as development slows down. Um, so we need to start thinking about how do we bring more revenue in? So if we focus more uh, efforts on towards economic development, bringing more commercial, but of course commercial has to be mixed with the right types of things that the community wants. So I think, you know, there are things on the housing, commercial side. Uh, I would like to see Dublin become more like a med tech type of a hub where we can attract more medical technology companies that would actually come here and actually bring their businesses here. In addition to on the housing side, you know, we need to think about the transit oriented development. We need, we have to look at our arena numbers. We have to evaluate how do we look at those. Redevelopment will be another area that we could evaluate. Um, downtown, I think everybody in Dublin has been looking towards this downtown for a long, long time. So I think we have to bring that into play over the next few years. And that will help overall the package of transit oriented uh, developments. Thank you. Um, so before I ask the next, next question, I just wanted to remind uh, the audience that um, you were able to ask your questions in the chat room, either in this forum or uh, on Zoom or also on Facebook as well. So please uh, make sure to include any of your questions over there and we will try to incorporate that if it hasn't been asked earlier during the forum. So I'm gonna put in the next. Um, so I'm actually gonna combine the next two questions, because I know a number of you had kind of touched upon uh, issues on both of, of these questions, but um, what will you do to help improve traffic and pedestrian safety um, throughout the city in neighborhoods and in more commercial areas? And then also um, our environment is suffering from drought, fires, pollution, and other issues. Um, do you believe in climate change? And what would what would be your top new strategy that would push that you would push forward to tackle environmental issues if you were elected? And this uh, question would go to um, Ms. Hu. 
So we talked about the, um, the traffic and also the environmental issues. I am, I'm a strong believer of sustainability. And I believe uh, we need to consider the impact to the environment when we approve the development projects. And we need to mitigate the traffic issues. And uh, we need to uh, consider the environmental impact when we even start to approve the projects. And post the COVID, um, there, people will start working and there will be more and more traffic coming like what we had experienced. Um, so there's a few smart technologies we might consider to control our traffic, such as adaptive, uh, adaptive traffic signals, real-time traffic monitoring, and uh, intelligent control of the signals. And um, let's talk about the environment is we want to make sure we do what we need to do as a citizen to help with the environment. Uh, Ms. Mapiti? So I think Dublin needs to do more to actually address climate change. I definitely believe in climate change. Um, rather than taking a very uh, reactive approach to wildfires, heat waves, and air pollution that we've been facing in the last couple of years, we need to be take, confronting the overall problem. Uh, this includes expanding our commitment to a low carbon economy by switching to renewable energy and electrifying buildings. We should continue building out EV charging, implementing bike lanes and smart development so that we actually reduce car centric culture and this in turn reduces traffic as well. Uh, and I think that we need to do a better job of uh, strengthening our relationship with transit authority groups to ensure that we have clean and affordable public transportation systems, hopefully when we're out of COVID. Um, one community member actually mentioned to me that her daughter spends nearly an hour driving six miles from East Dublin to Dublin High School. And so I think that as the second high school is now being built, we need to ensure that we're working collaboratively with the school board so that we have more crossing guards, more speed bumps, we're evaluating drop-off zones to ensure that we don't have accidents and we can actually build a very sustainable uh, Dublin community. Thank you, uh, Mr. Caudry. Yeah, so safety and traffic is definitely uh, one of my top priorities. Uh, I think specifically, uh, you know, we bottom line, we we all deserve a right. Uh, we all deserve the right to feel safe where we live, work, and play. Um, I think, in terms of the traffic, right, we can employ smart technologies. Um, we can try to increase public trans transit, and we could try to just make uh, more. You know, physical changes in terms of uh, the the flow and making crosswalks, for instance, more uh, more visible. Uh, previously in the Bay Area, I served on a technical committee for bicycle pedestrian safety. Um, I've actually joined the new Dublin uh, Bicycle Commission and and to help explore that a bit more. Um, in terms of the uh, sustainability, uh, environmental sustainability. Yeah, as a scientist, I absolutely believe in climate change. I think there's a lot that we can do. Uh, being cognizant and being aware with up-to-date scientific information about how we're developing is really important uh, with a special uh, attention to wetlands. Um, Mr. McCorston. You know, I absolutely do believe in climate change. Uh, there are certain things that the city can do now um, I would I would strongly encourage as a council member strategies that would reduce and focus on reducing congestion and and pollution. And what you do is you you you'd focus again on new residential and commercial development that's focused in the transit oriented zones and encouraging mat, the use of mass transit systems. I would discourage uh, further uh, development around the outer barriers of our city, the natural boundaries. I would encourage city investment in transportation technologies. This is a futuristic kind of thing, but it can happen over time in some of the smart technologies, micro mobility and autonomous vehicles. Uh, most importantly, I think we can do right now is I work uh, strongly to support clean energy solutions such as solar, and I would collaborate with the water district to su uh, support building new water storage facilities and explore recycling strategies. Mr. Qureshi? Well, if, I definitely believe in climate change. If you didn't believe it, you saw orange days where we came across. So it definitely tells you that the world is changing. Um, so I think um, ultimately 
we have to take care of our own planet. We have to take care of our own communities. Uh, traffic, you know, it's something that we all, you know, you've heard everybody pretty much talk about, you know, adoptive signal using technology. I think that's an area that we could improve on. We have done a fairly good job. City has done a good job on putting those in Dublin Boulevard. We have other areas that we're going to have to start looking at. Um, you know, looking at, uh, you know, once we look at transit oriented development, we're going to encourage people to have, be able to walk, be able to have uh, ability to take bike lanes, so things like those we have to start looking at. Um, electric charging stations that the city can provide for the community to use, those will be important. Um, working with other companies to provide some incentives for residents will be another area. There are already programs, let's just continue and make sure we enhance on those programs. So there are so many things that we could do, but we have to be realistic, say, hey, what can we do now? What can we do a year from now? Let's start to stagger them. Let's make sure the community understands. Thank you. Mr. Costello? Hello. Uh, yes. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. All right. Um, this is one of my biggest things is that uh, I'm on the, uh, the wheels board and we make sure that all the wheels buses and the paratransit buses are all running all right. But we need we need more buses out there. We need more safety. I am out there in, in my wheelchair, and I'm almost hit every day that I'm out there. People are not slowing down. They're going faster. And they have to realize that there's not just them out there, that there are the pedestrians, wheelchair people, people on, in scooters, people all over the place that are trying to get to and fro and fro and to. We are trying to make sure that we're all going to be safe. And I making sure that I tell each and every person, slow down so that we don't hurt each other. I've been hit eight times here in Dublin. Thank you. Um, so now we received a couple questions from the community. And so I'm actually just going to um, hold on a second. At the, I'm going to combine um, them both. So what experience do you have in civic engagement in the city? And do you have experience in building legislative consensus? And this question would go to um, Ms. Mapidi. Yes, I um, have experience working in um, in public service. Um, I volunteered on political campaigns since 2010 uh, for 2010 and, and 2012, as well as 2016 for Congressman Jerry McNerney, as well as Hillary Clinton. Um, I dedicated my early career towards public service. I worked at the Federal Reserve, the World Bank, as well as the State Department. At the State Department, I was specifically focused on human rights policy in the Middle East, so in Oman, Turkey, and Bahrain. Um, and beyond that, I've volunteered across different nonprofits and organizations in the Bay Area, uh, particularly targeted towards women empowerment. And I have experience working uh, and building a legislative con consensus and working across bipartisan um, layers, which I think is really important. So while I'm a Democrat and I identify as one, I previously worked for the former National Security Advisor, uh, HR General McMaster, who served under the Trump administration, because I think it's important to be able to work across people who disagree with you so you can actually be able to implement and learn from them to create um, overall holistic change. Thank you. Uh, so Mr. Godfrey? Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, I've had the honor and privilege of serving the community in a number of ways, uh, specifically around organizational management. I've helped with, uh, been on the board of HOAs, uh, have volunteered extensively within the parent faculty clubs. Uh, as well as those two um, uh, technical committees specifically focused around uh, bicycle pedestrian uh, safety. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in the, in the past, I've, uh, I've helped on a number of different campaigns for various politicians. I've helped them not just with the campaigning part, but afterwards in trying to understand where the public stands on various issues and try to build uh, legislation around uh, topics of interest. Um, as part of the the master plans uh, for the city of uh, for, for for the bay in terms of the um, bicycle side of things, you know that was working with authorities, uh, you know on on the traffic side, kind of larger within the county within the city itself, uh, as well as the public 
uh, focused around building consensus and trying to find the optimal solution for, for some of these safety issues. Thank you, Mr. McCorriston. Um, you have to unmute yourself. Am I on there? Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. Now we can. Can you start that over again? Okay. In terms of public service, um, I've already mentioned that I've been very involved in anti-poverty and housing uh, initiatives here, uh, learning a lot about what's going on, the hidden uh, disparity that's, that's going on in our community. As far as consensus is concerned, um, I have 35 years of building consensus in the corporate world. And that is a, uh, a huge uh, uh, challenge for many, many people. So I would say um, my background, I'm not a politician, uh, but I, I have many, many years of building consensus uh, uh, in, in experience through life. All right, uh, Mr. Qureshi. Um, I've been working in public service for the last 38 years since I was a little kid, whether it be starting at a, uh, po a political campaigns early on in my life to then getting involved in different organizations. So recently I was on Dublin Planning Commission. Prior to that, I was on a school board, zoning board, uh, environmental commission and human services uh, boards in other states and other counties. So I have basically done this for most of my career while I actually have a professional career. And this is because I've always cared about being in the community where I live, want to make sure I'm involved. So to me, I bring the experiences of in those uh, boards and commissions and having to work with cross the line with whether it be teachers, whether it be different legislators, understanding what the needs are, uh, working on campaigns and congressional campaigns, Senate campaigns. So I have done all those. So to me, I think the experience I bring along with my professional experience will be very important to this role and to the city. Of Dublin. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry. That'd be um, Mr. McCourse. No, I'm sorry, <laughs> Mr. Costello. Hello. Uh, yes. Uh, I when I when I first got here in in Dublin in 1984, the city has asked me to help them with all the ramps in Dublin, and I put a dot on each and every corner in Dublin saying, put a ramp there. And that's what I got to do for my very first uh, week. I moved to Dublin. Ever since then, I've been on all kinds of committees. I'm on the uh, wheels committee. That's uh, the TAC, T-A-A-C, the committee. Um, then I went to the, um, uh, the uh, Dublin Housing Authority committee. That was a commission. I, I did that for four years. I have been on, on the uh, PACO board. We, we pass out all the Major B money. When you pass the Major B, we, uh, we uh, are the ones who wrote that. Thank you. Ms. Who? being involved in public services for many years have helped uh, local elected uh, officers on their public services. Um, for example, like uh, when, um, uh, about a month ago, when we say the uh, um, fire department, they were fighting the fires and they need additional supplies. Uh, me and my uh, community, we brought uh, waters, we brought uh, snacks, we brought a lot of supplies to the two to the two fire stations in our city. And uh, we, I also serve at uh, uh, the school PFC and uh, I'm also founder of nonprofit organizations. So we helped uh, families and the students during the COVID-19 and uh, we are trying to um, help out. So for the building consensus, I want to say the most important is to be a good listener and uh, uh, creative thinking and bring solutions to the problems. And I have a lot of experience with that. Perfect. Thank you. Um, for the next question, let me go ahead and put that in the chat. Okay. So um, after the officer involved killings of Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, Stephen Taylor, among others, there have been greater calls to reimagine, defund, or even eliminate the police. 
Do you believe that changes are needed to be made with local police departments and training? And if so, what suggested changes would you make? And that would go to Mr. Kadri. Yeah, so I think it's, um, you know, in, in terms of safety and, and uh, safety kind of in, in general, right? Uh, we need to initiate more public oversight uh, with the community involved. Uh, that is going to create some much needed checks and balances uh, within, you know, how, how we're, how the police department and, and other services are, are providing services to the people of Dublin. Um, you know, we need to have that, uh, we need to have, you know, just checks and balances to, to keep, you know, things transparent and accountable. Uh, I think beyond that, uh, dialogue and conversation is absolutely critical, right? We need to create the right avenues, the right forums uh, for for people uh, to express their their own viewpoints and diversity and and encourage that, right? So when we have more sensitivity training, uh, police officers, for instance, might be able to respond to situations in a in a better method or or format, and I think that's critical. Uh, so more communication and more transparency, accountability. Mr. McCorston. Yeah, um, you know, I'm a, a strong supporter of public safety. Um, uh, we've seen some instances in, in communities, not necessarily in Dublin, but all over where the police resources have been stretched very thinly and situations have been really brutally mishandled. Um, with regard to the, the concept of defund police, it's more, it's more of a message. It's really about reallocating resources to, to other people who might be better equipped to handle situations uh, in, for, for different forms of intervention. And I, I fully support that. Um, you know, I, um, I, I, I think that could be something that we could consider in Dublin. Uh, with, you know, and I would strongly encourage ongoing discussions and, and oversight committees. I, you know, I'm for that. I think we can't go wrong. Uh, we need to always look at uh, improving what we're doing uh, improving our processes. So I'm very much for that. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Qureshi? Yeah, public safety is one of my top priorities. And, you know, Dublin police has done an overall great job keeping us safe. So we, first, I want to thank them. Second, I think when it comes to these topics, um, I believe in more investing in more training. I think there's training that needs to be done on how to handle mental health uh, issues, or how to handle autism, people with autism or handicap, or things like this that are important to the community to make sure that the police understand how to handle it. Second, um, I think we uh, definitely need a task force that actually works with community and the police to understand each other's needs. You know, Dublin has got so much diversity. You know, we need more diversified police department, public safety. So let's try to encourage more different different ethnic groups to get involved and participate and actually take jobs possibly. In it. So I think that's what we need. We need more diversity in public safety. We need to improve on training, improve on specific things like mental health and others I mentioned. Ultimately, I think that's where we need to invest and uh, improve. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. Costello? Yes. The, the police, when um, they're, they're doing a great job, and I and I uh, and I back up the police all the time. But they also have to understand that 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 it's not not just them out there; it is the whole world out there, and they have to understand that people with disabilities, like myself with cerebral palsy, have problems saying what we want to say to these police officers and making sure that they don't misunderstand what we're trying to say as a threat to them, because we're not. I am not threatening to anybody. I care about these policemen. I want to make sure that their job is going to be good. I want to make sure that we hire someone that is going to want to do the job and do it correctly so that no one gets hurt. Thank you. Um, Ms. Hu? First, I want to say my deepest uh, sympathies 
uh, go out to the families and the friends of those people who have been killed in your mentioned tragedies. And uh, this is a moment we all need to think about the um, equity and the inclusion. We truly believe public safety is number one pr priority for everyone. And uh, as you look at our Dublin as a city, our police department has done a fantastic job. They have done it very efficiently and they have kept us safe. And I want to uh, say thanks to them. But while there's always a space for improvement and uh, for the improvement, um, right now there's a task force is working with the community to seek out the ways they can uh, help them to improve. From my point of view, there's a, uh, there can be more transparent and more community involvement there. Thank you. Ms. Um, Obidi? Um, I think that while our police services have been really um, useful and helpful to supporting the safety of our community here in Dublin, I think there's always an opportunity for improvement, particularly around increasing the transparency and accountability of our police services. Um, police in Dublin are contracted out from the Alameda County, and so there is an opportunity to have a county-wide county impact uh, by increasing training towards police, uh, ensuring that there is more implicit bias training because there have been a number of families, especially those who are brown and black, who have told me themselves that they have been persecuted, uh, been even if they're just sitting with their family. And so I think that we need to do a better job of ensuring that we have implicit bias training, we recruit more diverse members to join police, and then we ear more, more funding towards first responder mental health crises and social caseworkers uh, and support the community involvement across public safety, especially like the citizen task force that is now hopefully going to be implemented here in Dublin. Thanks. All right, so this would go to uh, Mr. McCorriston. Um, so racist and hate incidences have been on the rise, especially, you know, throughout this time with COVID and also, you know, getting closer to the election. So what efforts have you made to combat racism and Islamophobia? And what will you do as a council member to tackle the issue and work towards inclusion? I have to unmute yourself. Okay, you know, I, I've been around for a while. My family and I, we, we grew up in, in the Berkeley area. We, we, they were involved in civil rights movements during that period of time. I've had lots of lessons in life. I've traveled around the world. I've seen some things. I've seen the sins of man. I've, I've gone through the South. I've, I've looked at, you know, I've seen some of the things that we don't want to see, internment camps and concentration camps. These are just lessons, okay? But coming back to, to messages that are going on now, uh, we need to combat, combat this hatred. And so getting to the point, folks, um, I would support programs that continue to, be, uh, to bring a, a peaceful solution, a, a peaceful social awareness to issues. Um, and, and I do that as not only a resident and a human being, but as a council member. Uh, bottom line is, it's my responsibility to listen. I, I, I haven't... Um, experienced this. I've had a lot of lessons and um, I, I would really support uh, further oversight in our community to enforce these issues, to make sure that we're, we're not discriminatory and we're not producing okay. hatred Thank language. Uh, Mr. Qureshi? Okay. Um, you know, I think, you know, if you look at my uh, campaign slogan here, Together is one of the key things to me, I think as a community, it's so much, so much diversity. We need to do a better job learning about each other, learning about our cultures, religions, respect each other and make sure that we are all represented in anything that we do as a community. So to me, uh, this starts off with whether it be Islam or any other religion, let's make sure people are understanding what are things we need to do? Maybe as a community, we need to look at, you know, let's do some cultural event as a you know community. Um, example is we do St. Patrick's Day Parade during early part of the year. Well, what, let's look at maybe doing cultural arts festival, cultural event where we bring the community together, where we actually learn about each other. So I think things like this start off education, starts off with programs we would create as a leaders in the city. And that's where I would be supportive of 
creating these programs, making sure that the community comes together as a whole. Okay, um, Mr. Costello. Hello. Yes. Uh, as I was, was saying earlier, uh, we all have to work together. Uh, and I am not a racist person. I, I, I've had a many, many, many uh, 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 different caregivers taking care of me. They're all different colors. And I respect each and every one of them. Filipinos, blacks, whites, doesn't matter. We're all, we're all human beings. We all have to be treated as human beings. So when I say that, that when we're going to get together, as we are together right now in this forum, we're all different races and we're all people caring about each other, trying to make sure that we're going to take care of you, the people out there. And, and we're going to make sure that each and every one of you is safe. Thank you. Ms. Hu? Uh, so I'm a first generation immigrant myself, and I'm a true believer of uh, equal right. And uh, I am against any discrimination based on the sex, gender, the religions, the age, um, sexual orientation, um, social class. And uh, I, I think this is one of the um, culture our Dublin has done very well. I heard from a lot of residents, they moved to Dublin because they say the diversification and the inclusion here. And we want to keep this way. Um, for the National Day of Prayer, we, as a technical uh, support, I, we hosted a, a prayer day with people with different religions, uh, Sikh, Masi, Hassan from Saramon Valley Islamic Center participated and other religions as well. We want to celebrate that uh, um, diversification and celebrate the culture of our Dublin together. Um, Ms. Mappity? Um, I think it first starts off by educating yourself as a city council person and as just a person who lives here in Dublin and across the world. Um, I believe that I've I've tried to educate myself by, for example, learning Spanish through my schooling. I studied Arabic during college. I lived and um, studied abroad in Oman and Turkey. Uh, I think it's important to be able to understand different cultures and immerse yourself to understand different people's perspectives and the way that you can also bridge and create collaboration. And I think those opportunities are a way to do so in Dublin here as well. But there are multiple ways that you can uh, combat racism and Islamophobia. For example, calling people in, you need to explain and really make sure that they're willing to learn rather than calling them out and making it sort of turning them off. Uh, rather than just explicit overt uh, accounts of racism, there's also microaggressions that you need to be able to call in as well. Ensuring that there's implicit bias training in the public sector as well as DNI training in the business sector as well, particularly targets towards teachers as well, and then increasing DNI uh, events across different cultural events. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kadri. Yeah, so I think first and foremost, it's really unfortunate all of the phobias, right? Not exclusively um, uh, Islamophobia, but but all of the other phobias that exist, uh, we need to put an end to it. I think we need to appreciate um, and recognize uh, and celebrate the diversity that Dublin has and the diversity that, that we have here. Uh, and, and I think it's worth taking a moment to recognize, you know, the indigenous native people um, who should be celebrated today, right? And, and we need to recognize the large population of Native Americans uh, living here in Dublin. Uh, beyond that, it, there's a lot that can be done in terms of education and more importantly, cultural awareness. And I think there are certain things that people can unite on, right? Uh, as a city council member, uh, I would encourage festivals, right? Celebrations that get people together and unite around food. So we can have events like uh, celebrating Holi or the Chinese New Year's or Eid celebrations, right? Getting people together and encouraging dialogue is the first step. Uh, and that's how we start attacking and uh, ending racism. Thank you. Um, so we're coming to the close of our event, um, but I'm gonna combine, I have a couple questions from the community and I'm gonna combine it uh, with our final question. 
Um, so, and the, and this would go to Mr. Qureshi. Uh, so what are your final thoughts? What do you want us to hear and why we should vote for you? Uh, what made you want to run? And then also what sets you apart from the candidates? Uh, so that would be the final question. So Mr. Qureshi. Great. Um, so why I want to run, it's uh, one, I want to give back to the community. I want our younger generation to be involved. And that means for any ethnic groups, you know, we all come here from different parts of the world. We want to get ourselves settled. We want to encourage our younger generation to be involved. And that's what I want to do. So I want to set that motion to say, hey, let's get involved, number one. Number two, I bring experience to this uh, position. I've served my communities throughout the years in different, different uh, appointed boards elected type of boards. So, you know, this is something that are at the forefront, right? School board, planning commission, environmental commission. These are things that are actually important to the city. Um, professionally, I know how to balance the budget. I know how to manage a larger organizations. So I think these are skills that will come handy when I'm in this role. Um, for me, it's all about giving back, coming together, and that's what I'm focused on. So this is why it's important. I want to encourage our community to get involved, make sure they vote, and listen to our voices. So please consider me as you vote this election. Thank you, Mr. Costello. Yes. Um, another reason why I'm running is uh, that uh, I I am also on the Human Services Commission. Last year, uh, the uh, the chair was not available. And I chaired the whole meeting last year, and that was great. And I got to see what it was like to be on the other side of the diocese. And, and, and I've been on so many committees that, that I feel that I can really give of myself to this whole thing. Not only will I give all of myself, but all of my time, you know, as a office hours, you know, I I lost my job at Chuck E. Cheese because of the pandemic. I wanna make sure that everybody else has a chance to get their, their jobs back. And really, really, I wanna thank you all for letting me come into your house and being a part of your life too. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Hu? Thanks for the organizers. I want to say the reason I want to run because I see Dublin has a lot of challenges right now. And I believe my experience and expertise can help to take on those challenges. Uh, with a PhD in architectural engineering, specialization uh, specialization in building technologies and environmental sustainability and uh, working experience as an assistant professor, as a researcher, as a director of environmental protection services, and also a business owner uh, right now. I um, have experience and expertise to um, tackle the problems, to bring um, practical uh, solutions, and I also have the uh, capabilities to bring the culture and the diversification to our council team. Um, last but not least, I will become a bridge to unite people. No matter what's your background, what's your culture, I'm a good listener and I can understand different people from different perspectives, bring the city together. Thank you. Ms. Mopidi? I honestly did not expect to run this year. It was more the consequence of the pandemic, the recession, the fact that friends were losing their jobs, the social unrest caused by a lot of the police brutality that we've seen across the nation. And now seeing the raging wildfires that actually, literally we have like to-go bags packed in our home all the time now. Um, these types of instances should not be happening. And as someone who is 25 years old, this is the type of future that I'm going to be living in as well as my peers and the next generations. And so, I think that I decided to run because rather than intellectualizing a lot of the larger issues that we think about around affordable housing, climate change, you can actually make a, a lot of difference at the local level. And I decided to run because you, I wanted to be able to create that type of impact. I hold policy experience and economic development experience. I've worked at the State Department, the Federal Reserve and the World Bank. Uh, I believe that these experiences, as well as my perspective, from a new generation and as someone who's a clean money candidate, not beholden to the interests of other special interest groups, I can bring a unique perspective and look out for me in the middle of the ballot. Thank you so much. 
All right, uh, Mr. Kadri. Yeah, so there, there are a number of reasons why we choose to live in Dublin. And more than anything, I want to ensure that that vibrant, you know, diverse community exists for my, for my son uh, and the rest of the, the next generations to come. Uh, you know, I think what separates me is my level of energy uh, experience and the plan to not only maintain our quality of, of life uh, for, for Dublin, but ensure that it thrives. Uh, you know, coming out of COVID, uh, we need to take an evidence-based scientific approach to rebounding. Um, and, and I can definitely lead the community through that. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely your candidate for transparency, honesty, and accountability in city government. Uh, and more than anything, I wanna be your voice. I want to listen to you. Uh, I've been engaging with the community and will absolutely continue to do so. Um, as your uh, next city council member, I look forward to working with all of you in order to keep Dublin safe, resilient, and sustainable for everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. McForston. I'm mute. You're muted. <laughs> are, are we good now? Yep, now we're good, thank you. All right, let's go for it. Hey, look, look I've lived in Dublin for 26 years. I've seen the place change. Um, I wanna make an impact, okay? Um, I think what distinguishes me from uh, other candidates is I'm willing to listen and, and take into consideration the views of others. I've been doing that for 35 years. Um, you know, I, I, unlike other candidates, I've actually studied uh, the issues facing our community over the last two years. I've attended all the, the council meetings. I've been involved in educational programs with the city. Um, I am a member of the Human Services, uh, Dublin Human Services and Anti-Poverty Housing Committees, which gives me a really strong understanding of all the hidden and, and social disparity that's going on in the community. Um, my professional background in corporate treasury and banking is based on trust, and it's a fiduciary responsibility in dealing with, you know, really complex problems and initiatives. Um, yeah, I, ha I have lots of endorsements and, and, and people believe in me and my message. Um, so I, I really do take this opportunity uh, to represent you very seriously. And I'm, I'm respectfully asking for your support during the election. And, and you can you. Uh, visit my website for more information. Uh, that's www.mikefordublin2020.com. Thanks. Thank you so much to all of the candidates for joining us tonight, uh, for sharing your platforms. I wanna give a special thank you to Minna for being the amazing timekeeper. Uh, we truly appreciate it. It's not an easy job. Um, I wanted to also just remind you all to make sure to uh, check out our website in order to um, learn more about like the different events that we're having uh, regarding voter education, uh, to also check out our voter guide that just got published. Again, that's the Care California Voter Guide with the um, scorecard for our congressional members and uh, the, the state representatives as well, along with our recommendations for the ballot measures and also for the propositions. Um, so again, the, you can find that at bit.ly uh, forward slash care CA vote. That's C-A-I-R-C-A -A vote. Um, and then also make sure if you haven't yet, please fill out the census. You have until the 30 first. Um, again, for every person that does not fill out the census, it will it, we could lose up to $10,000 or even more, I've even heard, um, in uh, federal funding uh, to the community. So again, it only takes you 10 minutes. Uh, it actually pretty much takes you less than that, but 10 minutes to answer nine questions that are going to impact you for the next 10 years of your life. Uh, so please make sure to fill that out. Again, if you're not registered to vote, you have until October 19th, my birthday. So hopefully you remember both those important dates. Um, <laughs> so thank you again for joining us tonight. Um, we uh, just make sure to get out the vote. We have uh, November until November 3rd. So um, thank you again. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at one of our other candidates forms tomorrow. We have a candidate form for Oakland City Council members. Uh, so check out our website and our Facebook page for more information on that. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Samina. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.